Welcome to another episode of Tyler Johns. This is the second for the year. Um, we're going to be trying to do this every fortnight. So every Wednesday we're going to be releasing um, a new episode. Today we've got an exciting guest. I've been wanting to get him on for a while. Um, this is Garden State Journal. How are you, Dylan? I'm good, man. I'm good. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you, man. Um, what is Garden State Journal, man? Well, yeah, I, I've been doing these, these street videos now um, all over Melbourne where I go to the suburbs, different suburbs of Melbourne, and I shoot just, you know, a little video where, you know, you see all the people going past and I put, like, to music of, like, trying to put together a feel of, like, what each suburb in Melbourne feels like to me. Um, and, like, I guess where it started was, um, well, late 2021 into 2022, I was – I've always been doing filmmaking stuff because, obviously, that's where I, I met you. We um, I used to be – do Milk Bar with Simon and we, we did – a few videos like we went to the vintage markets and you know talked to people and um always had that like interesting like the document documenting element or like and especially filmmaking and you know worked on like a, a feature length when i was much younger so like always had that interest in in filmmaking um so it was always my intention like to put that into something consistent and to then build something where you know i could be working doing filmmaking work consistently um, and so late 2021, well, it was I actually started somewhere else, was like late 2021, I was sitting down with Simon and we were talking about, I was like, oh, fuck, like, there's no like Ma- Melbourne magazine, like Melbourne culture uh, magazine, like where we can just, it's just celebrating all Melbourne stuff, you know, that, that I like or that we like that fits our tastes. And then he was like, oh, you just fucking go start it yourself then. Go like, what are you, stop talking about it, go do it yourself. And I was like, oh, I have to, and this was late 2021. So 2022, I started putting together this physical magazine did the first volume. And um, as I was doing that at the same time of putting that first volume together, I was like, well, I've got the camera, I've got all this gear. Cause you know, I did all these videos and stuff. And I'm like, I need, I want to have something visual, which assists this, this idea of like, I'm documenting Melbourne in, in terms of the physical media. So I started doing these videos to, um, to kind of uh, be almost like an ad for the magazine. So it kind of started off as a side thing, but as I did it more and more, people were taking all this interest in the in the in the videos, and I was like, "Shit!" Like this is kind of more important almost than the magazine. So the magazine continued. I did two volumes. I did a newspaper version, and now I've got another three volumes planned for this year. Um, but it almost kind of became that the magazine is kind of a side piece to the to the filmmaking. Which is which actually turned out really great because I've always had more interest in the filmmaking. The, the magazine was just kind of a way in to to kind of build something and have a bit of infrastructure and you know get people interested. Um, but yeah, it's been great because like the filmmaking now and these videos about Melbourne, which is you know like I've always had this interest in like making stuff about Melbourne, has kind of taken over and become like my main thing now. Why have you been so interested in making just stuff about Melbourne? What's um, the reasoning behind that? So I got a, I got a good story about this when I when I was when I was a kid, um, living in in Hadfield like in Glenroy, um, my mate said to me my mate said to me oh they're making this they're shooting like everyone knew like you know, Dylan like I'd made little movies with my mates like you know and a lot of kids do like a lot of kids had that interest in like movies they make little movies with their mates when they're kids right um, and I was that kid so like everyone knew I oh, like loves to make little action movies and stuff like that and my dad always was very encouraging in that. Um, and, and then my mate said to me, oh, they're making this movie around the corner from, from my house. And I'm like, oh, he's like, oh, you should come. They've got like the car, like these old cars. It's like an old set and everything. It's crazy. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I've got to go. I've got to go. I never got to go. Um, and then one day I was like, just like, I just, I just had this interest in filmmaking. So I'd always watch like random movies, sometimes Aussie movies, just over, like my cousin, one of my cousins, Daniel, would just always like, put me on to like random, random as movies. So like I had this very diverse range of like where I was watching movies. Right. And, um, and so one day I'm like just watching this, this, like this, this Aussie movie called, uh, called the mule. And it's like about this, like this guy like smuggles drugs in from Bali. It was like based on a true story and I'm watching it and I'm like, wait, is that fucking, is that that movie they shot? Cause I, I paused the frame. I'm like, that looks very familiar. The street. And I realized it was East Street in uh, in Hadfield where I'd, I'd grown up. And this movie had like pretty, it had like Hugo Weaving like from The Matrix and it had like, um, 
had uh, what's the guy Angus Sampson, who's like a pretty big actor now. He, he's in like Mad Max, the new Mad Max movie. He's done actually like quite a few big movies now. Um, and I was like, and it just I couldn't compute in my head that they'd made this pretty big, like reasonable sized movie around the corner on that street where like I'd grown up. Like it just didn't, I just couldn't like, it was like, what the fuck? Like they did that there, you know? And cause you always just think like movies are made in Hollywood, like in this distant place, like it's, it feels very foreign. And the fact that it was made there almost blew this, like broke down this barrier in my head of, oh, you could do something like that because it was just done around the corner. So it kind of like broke down that barrier. And then it, I think ever since then, I've been on this, like this journey of trying to, articulate what that is to me like trying to make movies or try to make little videos of something that has been was done around around the corner that just felt local that just felt small you know yeah for, for sure like because you've been doing a lot of filming around melbourne and australia talking about all these old films and stuff yeah what's sort of your favorite suburb that you've filmed because you've done like over pro like 10 probably I've, I've, I've done i reckon i've done 30 now yeah i reckon i've done oh, 30 in total like yeah. maybe maybe five or five of those were brunswick or sydney road related <laughs> and and that's sydney, not sydney road only sydney road. and but it's not because like i'm I, I i don't live in brunswick or anything like i never really even grew up in brunswick um i only started hanging around there a few years ago um but it was just because there's so many interesting characters on sydney road mm. and it was the closest place to me with interesting characters so I would go there because I'm going to go, you know, you're going to put all this work in, you're going to go out with the camera, you're going to put basically a day aside to shoot because you've got to sh- like spend a lot of time moving around with the camera. Um, so I would do Sydney Road because it was close to me and I knew I was going to get something out of it. I knew if I went there on a rainy day, there would be pe- like people walking, like trying to get to the get to the tram. And like I knew if I went on a, you know, like there's always be a few hipsters and a few like old people, like funny old, old wogs and mm. stuff like to shoot. So... That's the that's really the only reason I started. People think like, oh, it's Brunswick's like your favorite. It's like probably my favorite actually was the Northcote. The Northcote one I felt mm. was very special. I don't know have you seen have you seen the Northcote yeah, one? Like, yeah. Then I use like the Sam Cook song. Um, uh, it it yeah something like that felt very special because you know you know people commented and they're like, oh, you shouldn't like video like a mum and a kid or whatever. But I was like, that was what was special to me. It was like the moment where like there was like a mum like putting putting a bike helmet on a kid and like. Um, like the families and one, like the mum was like carrying a baby and like an, an old, a few old blokes and a um, few people at, at like a local pub there. Like that, I don't know, that one felt really special to me because it felt like a very diverse range of, of personalities. Um, yeah, and and especially, yeah. especially Northcote seems like very um, family orientated anyways, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Which was sort of different to Brunswick or Chapel Street, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, I, I don't always get it. I don't, I, I don't know, there's no such thing as getting it right, I think, but there is sometimes like getting close to what the suburb means to people. Um, and I felt like with the Northcote one, I got close. I got like really close to, or even like maybe with the recent one, like the Sorrento one, I got pretty close to what Sorrento feels like to me. Um, yeah. So probably I would say the Northcote one is my favorite. Maybe the, the Oakley one was pretty cool. Um, yeah. They're all, they're all, they're all, uh, they've all got something in them. Even the, even the ones I look back on now and I go, oh, they're not, great that's like, good you know yeah. there's it's all i've learned a lot as i've done it as well what was the difference between like shooting in the city and then going say to sorrento where it's that's completely yeah different like yeah, landscapes yeah. you know that's a great question actually um uh i don't know it's it's more the music and how you're going to pair the song with it as well i feel like that's really important is you can capture all this beautiful imagery but i think the song is very important in piecing that together um and I was driving, I was driving down down the beach, and and as I was driving, I was listening to this guy, uh, Rodriguez, and he kind of like a un, bit of an unknown musician. But I had that all his best of playing when I was driving down to the beach, and there's that one song, and I was like, oh, that I don't know, that just feels like I just encapsulated how I felt in that moment, you know, going down to the beach and how I feel, you know, just being being there in summer. Um, and yeah, it just it just clicked. I don't know. Just, just the song, and then the song helps inform when you're shooting. What you know, um, but it's it's also just being there at the right time. I don't know something about. I really I, I shot a few things in that day, and I was like, I don't know. It's good. It's 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 cool. But I went back in the afternoon, and when I shot in the afternoon, I got more 
you know, families and people who were just kind of going out for dinner and people who were, because it was where I shot a lot of that video was close to the ferry in, in Sorrento. So people who were like heading back to the ferry who actually weren't from Sorrento, but you know, like the, there was a bunch of kids I shot in that video that I asked them, I'm like, oh, can I do this like close up shot of you guys? And they're like, oh, hundred percent. And they were from Ocean Grove. But something about that as well feels, feels very Sorrento is the fact that not everyone there is actually from Sorrento. Yeah, well, you know, people go from like Queenscliff to Sor yeah, to Sorrento. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I'm not sure what the question was, but yeah, know, well, but, yeah, yeah, like like what's the difference between the landscape, like the shooting from Sorrento and um, the city? Was yeah. it just like different vibes or yeah, just different? I don't know. You just you just get you just like try get in tune with it. You just try and and you know, do I have enough? Have I shot enough? uh do i have i have i done enough uh you know i don't know you just you just you get very in tune with especially when it's places you know or places you've been to before you can easily kind of tap into what is that is the the, the vibe of the place mm. and if, if you're and like for example like i wanted to shoot a ride video as well yeah i was there and i'm like i want to shoot a ride video and were you going to do it on the same day or was it if i was there a couple i was there for a couple of days and yeah. you know so i was i was gonna do it but i was like i don't know i just didn't and i kept saying i'm gonna go i'm gonna go do it but i never felt i never felt right like i didn't feel like and i don't know i almost felt like i'd said everything i had to say with the sorrento yeah. video almost like when you can do sorrento and that can capture all of what the beach feels like that captured it was sorrento well but that it whole was that whole coastline you know what yeah, I mean? there's yeah. nothing more to say almost and i feel yeah. like sometimes with the street videos like like there isn't much more to say with the with doing a brunswick one or doing mm. a doing a north almost like the north one I, I got it so right there's not much more to say you know um so i'm looking now for those suburbs where there is more to say or where there is something that i haven't tapped into yet um and doing those ones you know doing different things but that's what's so good about Melbourne. Like every suburb's different, and like, yeah, um, yeah, it's very culturally different. And like, say yeah. Paran or something. Then you go out west; it's completely different. You know what 100%. I mean? So yeah, there's always characters around. There's always like different cultures as well. Hundred percent. Like especially with Chapel Street, it's a lot, a lot of Greeks. You know? Yeah, yeah. And they like run this sort of area. Yeah. And then like you go down to Balaclava, and it's like a lot of Jewish people. You know? Yeah, I did. I did the Balaclava. I was really happy with the Balaclava one as well. I feel like I could have captured a bit, bit better, but. Um, on that note though I think the, not the pushback but the yeah there is always more to capture but I think the point of it being now is that there is almost a point where you become a little bit of a uh, uh, not a stereotype but a, a cliche version of yourself like if I just keep doing these videos where it's just the suburbs and I do the uh, I do the, the music over it you know there is a point where you kind of uh, not, not, not cliche I don't know how to fucking word it but um, uh, a parody you become a little bit of a parody of yourself so I'm trying to avoid that now a little bit not not just doing these suburbs and going there and putting a cool song over it um, and that's where like what we will get into like you know where I'm going this year is trying, trying to almost move away a little bit from that because I've done it and I'll repost those videos and re-edit them and do different versions of them and I'll still shoot street videos like people love that stuff and it, when it fits the vibe of like what I'm doing I'm going to do those things Um but where, with where I'm going this year, it's almost like I just don't want to become a parody of that now. You know, I don't want to just be like, oh, here's the guy and he's doing the street. It's cool for a while. Uh, and last year it was sick. But there's now coming back to, you know, the original thing of like, you know, where I started and wanting to tell those like Melbourne stories. There's ways then to innovate off that. Do you know what I mean? Like to push that, the boundaries of that now. So you're going to be going more into community vibe sort of thing or like melbourne community or um well yeah well obviously like we've been doing the markets or markets yeah we, we've been doing the markets so yep. we've been doing like i sell the volumes and i'm going to sell the new volumes that are coming out this yep. year at the markets um uh but um yeah so there's there's that aspect of it is continuing to do the markets and doing some videos i have diff like different ideas of how i'm gonna kind of you know do these videos in a suburb, but make it more make it more focused. It's like going to a suburb, and maybe focusing more on a partic one particular character. Like let's follow this person who lives in that suburb, or a mate who lives in that suburb, and he, he works on old cars. So let's just shoot a whole video about him working on old cars, because you know it, it can be meanwhile in Preston or Bandura or wherever uh, any suburb, but it's that's still a character that lives in that suburb. So you can focus 
on one character and be like, oh, here's a character that lives in that suburb, if that makes sense. No, I love that. Yeah. That's such a like, better, better way to go, I reckon. Like, well, it's more, I think more it's more articulate. Yeah. I think it's more articulate. I think that's where I want to take it is my videos. I want to be more articulate now. It's like, all right, I've shown on a broad scale the personalities that, you know, this person walks around, you know, you see all these different characters that live there. But now I want to get almost more articulate about what Melbourne is to me. Because I think it is still very vague when these videos, people come out, it's like, oh, he's kind of like glorifying like, you know, like the Melbourne lifestyle. Like you go out for coffees and it's cool and it's da-da-da, it's this and that. But I don't think, it still feels very vague in terms of what Garden State Journal is. It feels very vague to me. It feels very, um, a little bit unarticulated in, in terms of how I feel about Melbourne. You know, it's starting to get, you know, more specific now. Um you know, and coming back to like, I don't know, I just, when I think of Melbourne, like I think of a little bit like when, you know, how I grew up, it was a lot around, you know, hanging around you guys, like hanging yeah. around you and Ash and like hearing the passion you guys would talk about the vintage stuff. Like when I think about Melbourne, I almost think rather than just the broad, like, oh, the suburbs or whatever, I think that like passion, like I think about like that attitude of like, like how you and Ash feel about vintage, like how passionate you guys are or, you know, when we're hanging around with Nate from Itch Pig, you know, or like, um, you know, now like we've been working at Push Pull, like that and their passion about stuff and, and Simon and all my mates, like all that, that, those personalities and those characters, that's more what Melbourne is to me is like these very particular characters and personalities that I want to like focus on, you know. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, going back to, you just talked about a whole group of your friends. Like your <laughs> your friends are doing a lot of good stuff at the moment, obviously yeah. like Milk Bar. Yeah. Um, you obviously spit off with um, Simo on that, but then you've also got your other friends. Split up. Just, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the evil <laughs> split up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the way he worded it when he was he was on this podcast. Yeah. Like, he, was like, he was like, yeah, fuck, deal with it. <laughs> yeah. I don't like him anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but you got a whole group of good friends around yeah, yeah. you. You just talked about your friends just saying like they're all doing a bunch of good stuff. Do you reckon that pushes you to do better things as oh, well? 100%. I'm, I'm a product. I, I was doing, you know, I was obviously doing Garden State and yeah. stuff before I met. It's obviously Zach and, and uh, who has got a jewelry brand and um, Spencer and Jackson who run this brand, Estelle House and Simon doing Milk Bar. And I really only knew Simon, uh, you know, when I was starting Garden State Journal and, you know, having that one friend who, you bounce ideas off and they push you and they break your ball. Like that's great. Mm. Um, but now we've got like a group of us and, and we all kind of push each other. Um, and, and yeah, a hundred percent pushes you because y you feel accountable to those people. Like, and you know, when you say, oh, I'm going to do this, you know, when you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. It's like, those people are going to hold you accountable. Yeah. They're not going to let you off the, off the leash. You know, you go a, a year and you don't do any of the stuff you said you were going to do. And, you know, the, you, you, they'll just go, oh, yeah, no, it's all right, man. Like, you, we'll just do that tomorrow. Like, the, the, we're, we're not like that. We're mm. not like that. And, um, and you know, even if even if they didn't say anything, it's like I know those guys and, and everyone in that – in broadly in that group, you know, I know all, all these people I'm around now, in a year or so, they're going to be doing other things. Mm. So what am I going to say, like, when they've moved on to doing this thing, that thing? What am I going to what am I what am I going to stand in the circle or stand in the group and say oh, I've done you know I've, like what you know what am I going to say oh, I've been doing this or that you know so they 100 percent hold you accountable and like you know even Zach, like Zach's a great example you know I was, I was having a conversation I was telling him about all the ideas for this year and he said to me like he said a great thing he was just like that's that's cool that's cool we're we're sitting in this garage we're sitting in his garage like talking about I'm like that's cool we're sitting in this garage right now talking about all these ideas. But in a year, if you haven't done these things, you're a fucking loser. Yeah, <laughs> it's so like you need like an accountability yeah, yeah. board, he's you like, know? He's like, you're just, a, you're just a fucking shit talker if you haven't yeah. done this stuff in a year. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, and I laugh. I'm like, yeah, you're hundred percent right. Like there's, there's talk is great, but you need, yeah, you need those people who, who are going to say like, It'll hold you accountable. Hold for you it. accountable. And that's even why I love coming on, on here or like the other podcast I did because, you know, today I'll talk about all the things I'm going to do this year. But if I don't fucking do those things in a year, then people you can come back in a year and be yeah, like, oh, why didn't you do that? Yeah, yeah. I'll sit here <laughs> I'll and you'll hold be you like, accountable. You, yeah, you hold me accountable. You'll be like, oh, so what, what happened with that thing? Mm. And I'll go, oh, yeah, nah, I got busy and um, and this happened and my dog died and my fucking <laughs> this and that. And uh, and I got, you know, I got distracted and then I couldn't do it. And then, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then you'll step away and go, he's a fucking, you know, what the fuck? <laughs> I can't, like, he's not come back on again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try and get yeah. like, all the guests on in a year's time to see where yeah, they go. Yeah, so yeah. it's going to be a good, that. good time to see like yeah, your accountability, you know? 100%. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, 
you guys have in your group of mates, you yeah. have uh, Melbourne Run Club, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah so so you, you've just started this thing, and it's, it seems like it's growing. Oh well, yeah, there's a lot of interest in it, but yeah. really, it's just I'm not I'm not very athletic. I, I only just started getting into running this year. Zach's a gun, like a like a fucking athlete. Yeah, Simon's I've been very always into into fitness and stuff. So, um, and then Spencer and Jackson as well will just like do a bit of running casually. But we've just it's the idea is just that we run all we do we go for a run or we do some kind of workout all together, and then we. Well, you know, whether it's a speech sprint or, you know, um, a five, five, 10 K run, whatever, you know, the idea being that we just do something, a piece of work, exercise together. And then we do that. And then we go and we sit down and we talk and we discuss what we're going to do this year and where we're at with things. And we get advice from each other on what do you think of this thing? What do you think of that? Um, yeah. So it's, we don't, we're not like, we're not like crazy fucking athletes <laughs> like in terms of what we do as a group, but yeah. you know, people, I, I guess people have the interest in it because we're, as I, I, I said last one's like, we're all artistic, but we're not just art. We're not just like that artistic uh, cliche. Mm. It's like, we, we do have this element of like, we hold each other accountable. Like, Oh, you haven't been running. We haven't been working out. You haven't been taking care of yourself. And, even with you, like you know you like you're into into all that stuff as well so you know like how, how important that is for your mental health and mm. we were t- on the walk here we were talking about like the, how important that stuff is for your mental health so you know having you know we encouraging each other and pushing each other to do that stuff you know actually benefits whether you know you running a business or me doing the filmmaking it actually helps you when you're doing those things if you've even just done a five or ten k run you know when you go and then for me like you know i, I I, sque- well, I was doing this shoot with Push Pull the other day. And uh, sorry, I know this has gone off the Melbourne Run Club. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, building no, off of that idea of, like, of exercise yeah. and like, you know, the whole point of it being like, like I, I was doing a shoot with Push Pull the other day. We were shooting this little skit. And um, I just I just got like a fight, like a, I think only like a 6K in before. But the fact that I did that, I went to the shoot that night and I was just so... I was just so much more on point. Yeah, like, focus. In, and, and I had to, I really had to direct this time yeah. because we were doing a skit. So we would do, we had to do multiple uh, angles. Uh, we had to, we had to run through the scene multiple times. I had to direct and make sure like pieces of information were being conveyed. And the running, doing, just doing the run before, I knew I was just so much more switched on. I was just so much more sharp and focused, just doing that little bit, you know. And I think that's, yeah, the point of all of us, like as a group, it's just that doing that little bit just like makes you so much more sharp in your work, in running a business, in whatever. Was that sort of like the first time you've directed a team like that? Like doing a storyboard or like whatever? You with, that video, yeah, with that video I did the other day. Well, no, actually not the first time. It's a, it's the first time in a while that I've pulled all that that directing. Yeah, um, I mean. That directing, uh, those directing tools out of the bag mm. because those directing tools I actually developed – um, years ago when I was still in school when I did the f- I did this film with my mates so my mates who I grew up with uh, Daniel Mark Sal because all the boys from, from <laughs> the boys like, the boys from uh, from Glenroy and, and Faulkner and that like we all grew up together and we shot this this film together and that was and that, I think that was actually around the same still the same time that I was doing those videos like with 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 Simon Milkbarm with you know coming to meet you and stuff Um but I developed that, making that movie with my mates, I developed that skill set of how to direct because I was directing my mate and we had a script and I had to do multiple angles and I had to uh, make sure we were being consistent with the plot and where the, and, and I made all those mistakes then. I made all the mistakes of like when I put the camera down and I didn't know, you know, I didn't, I made a bunch of mistakes with where, you know, oh, fuck, I would go to edit it and go, oh, fuck, I, miss, I forgot to get that angle. I, I wasn't consistent with this thing. Or in that shot, he stood over there and then he stood over there. So it's inconsistent. So I learned all those things and now I almost have this. And I'm not completely there yet. Like I've still got so much more in the next few years to learn as a director. Because that's really my interest is directing. And um, and I learned, but I learned so much from doing that because it was such a grueling process. So now when I go and shoot a little skit, it's like a walk in the park. Because I know, okay, I've got to get two angles. We've got to run through the scene. From You can't just do run that piece of dialogue. You've got to run from start to finish. You've got to make sure the audio is, all right, is everyone being quiet on the street. Um, all right, where, where are we at with the sun? Where's the sun hitting? All right, is that causing, causing a shadow there? Um, uh, the framing, all right, we're thinking about we're doing shooting for portrait as well, shooting for, for 
Instagram, shooting for widescreen as well. You think of all these little things and these little pieces of information that you're managing. Oh, we should, we did that angle, but then that person walked across. So now we've got to reshoot it because that person came across, you know. Um, and this is all the stuff they do on bigger bigger projects as well. So, you know, you learn that and then you apply it to bigger things. But, um, yeah, I learned all that those skills making the movie with my mates because it was such a grueling process, but in a good way. Like it was so, it was, you know, like Quentin Tarantino says, like I didn't go to film school. I made a movie and that was my film school. And I feel the same way. It's like, I've already been through film school. You know? Well, there's a lot of people now, they don't even go to uni or anything and they start businesses. Well, yeah. I'm like a person 100%. that's done it. Like I've started a business not from going to uni and it's, we've been going for five years and that's just off like making mistakes. As you said, like you, made a whole bunch of mistakes when you did that long film with yep. a whole bunch of mates. I've made a lot of mistakes at the start of this business, but now you just obviously get better and better. Mistakes are good. I've got, I got, got a funny, I've got a great story for you. <laughs> Go on. The first time I came to a, a market, uh, Ashes Market, I don't know if you, I think actually you were at that one. It was you and Push Pull when they were doing just the vintage stuff. And I'm, I'm a bit crazy like this. I, I went, I went, we well, came to that first market and I was with, it was the first time I brought Simon and I saw what you guys were doing and you guys were a bit young, like just a little bit, a few years ago, so you were a little bit younger. And I realized like, this is crazy. Like these guys are just doing this stuff by themselves. Like they're not, they, they're not formally trained in anything. Like you guys, you guys were just doing those markets and just putting it together yourself and you had no formal training. You were just doing it off, off and doing it out of passion doing it out of love, like out of genuine, like we're, we're so, pa and this is, I feel like now vintage has become a little bit more mainstream, but you guys were just doing it for, for fun. Mm. Like you guys were so passionate about it. And I came to that market that day and I, and I had to, I was working at High Point at, um, I was at a coffee shop and High Point at that stage, I was still in like year 10 or year 11. And I went, I went, I came to that market and then I went from there, I got the tram to work and I walked in and I walked into work and I said, I quit. <laughs> Because and, and it's not that I haven't I haven't gone on to work other uh, part time and you know not to put down working a part time job because it's very important, but I I had to um I had to go I had to almost like show myself like I'm gonna go and I'm gonna Give I had to like crap. make a statement to myself that like I'm about I'm about like teaching yourself and making it work yourself. You know, and like throwing yourself in the deep end. It's like I was like I was almost like inspired by seeing how you guys were just doing this stuff yourself to quit quit my my job and just go, all right, throw yourself in the deep end now. Throw yourself in the deep end, like to quit the job and go find another job, or you know, quit your job and go work on this thing. Or like you know, I, I almost like had to try to get warm myself up into that mentality because I'd seen how you guys would had done it at doing the vintage stuff, and I was so inspired by that. Yeah, that's why a lot yeah. of successful people do it as well. They're just like trying to push constantly through yeah. and it didn't mean anything because like i quit that job and then i went and fucking worked macca's night shifts after that at the like fork the macca's but it was the whole point of like i'm gonna like purposely deliberately throw myself off the deep end mm. right now all right you're comfortable you're comfortable right now doing this job all right quit yeah and and i feel like that was the same way with you guys like even ash came from another job i'm not sure did you work like did you work many other jobs before you yeah yeah i was a lifeguard but then i was just like i was yeah. pushing it like i was doing like 10 hour days after lifeguarding shifts. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And it was just like, yeah. And, and I just, hungry, I was just so you know? inspired by like the, the fact that you guys, I, mean, I think both of us, me and Simon were so inspired by the fact that you guys were just, you could just tell that you guys are just, just gone fuck it. And we're just going to throw ourselves off the deep end and just do it and not expect and just, and make the mistakes and, and figure it out. And yeah. So I always had to say thank you to you. And even to my cousin, Ash, I never really say it to him, but like that, in, that influence when we were like 16 to 18, was massive like just seeing you guys and and looking at you guys and being like fuck they're like so cool and like mm. coming to those first markets like there was there was a great um who was in guy who was in push pull at the time uh max uh robinson yeah uh, do you remember, do you yeah, remember yeah. him max and um and jimmy um, jimmy and pat and all those yeah. guys and like um we would we would go to the markets and come to markets and talk with you guys and just you know, we were like, just like kids in the candy shop. Like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> these guys. like, oh, these guys. And then like Max would ask me about like the move, like the move, when I was making the move with my yeah. mates. And I was like, fuck, this guy's like actually like taking an interest in this stuff. Like, and every time I would see Max, he would like ask me, oh, how's that, how's that movie going with your mates? And how, how, how's that going? Like, and you having that, like, especially when you're that age and there's a people who are just a couple of years older than you. Yeah. And they're like taking an interest in what you're doing. It's like, yeah, so, push you along. Oh, it's so, so, it's oh, so yeah, yeah, need yeah. to make this good. Because so the first... 
video I saw of you, like obviously you did the one of us, which I was like, yeah, so good. Yeah. And then um, the next one was the 91 vintage video. And I was like, oh, this kid, man. Well, that's, kid. that's where, that's where a lot of my <laughs> style really starts. Yeah, there was see- a full, there was, there was a change in the style from our one. Like you did one with me and it, the itch pig and then you did, um, like promoting that market or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. then you did the 91 vintage market and I was like, the style like this is it like well yeah you know. was that the one where i had like the montage at the end yeah. with all the all the characters and it was like i did like the frankie valley song like mm. that was that was very me like that was touching on very me and, and my personality that's when you're still with milk bar like doing yeah the yeah film shit. yeah and um and yeah I, I felt like even just doing like the frankie valley song and like having the montage of all the people who were at the market like mm. that was i felt like i was touching on something like fuck this is not just a, a fucking vlog about the market. Like mm. this is touching on something where you're getting more into the, the heart and the soul of the people who are there. Cause anyone can, you know, like, I don't know, like there's, there's so many, like you could, I could go anywhere and find resources now about, Oh, what, you know, this person or that, or like, you know, running a business or like, Oh, you know what, I, I could, if I wanted to, if I want to see, there's no point in me doing a video where I go like, Oh, what's, what, what, what are you, what are you selling? Uh, what are you selling Tyler? Yeah. Cause I can come into your store and see it myself or I can, there's so much of that, or even, you know, you've got so much content already out there about mm. what you guys have. There's no point making like a cliche video. It's like, if you're going to make a film or you're going to make a short film, or you're going to make a little video. You always got to try and dig more to the heart of a person or, or a group of people or a business, you've always got to try to get more to the personality because that's something that's, first of all, it's a more of a challenge to try and articulate what is like the personality or the character. Um, and it's more interesting to people. You know, it's more interesting when I did that video and I, and I, uh, you know, and I just, just, just did the montage at the end and like I'm, I made it more about the personalities and the characters. Man, yeah. I love like your idea behind videography, like how you want to shoot people is yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, it just makes me just like think about like oh yeah like i want to go through that journey as well you know well it's it's, i don't know even you look at like great filmmakers it's like they're not the difference between a filmmaker and a videographer is like and there's nothing wrong with videographers but you like people don't make the people don't oh no i don't don't give a shit what you call but just more that people people when you're growing up you're like oh all right i'm gonna work as a videographer part i'm gonna work as a videographer uh so that one day i can make a movie or something like that. People have that idea, but it's like, no, I think you're, you've got to decide, do I want to be a videographer or do I want to be a filmmaker? Because they're, they're two distinct things, right? There's nothing wrong with being a videographer, but videographers are like guns for hire. They come, they shoot a little video, do a little recap about what this what this market or like uh, what this thing was or what that thing was. Um, so that they do a little like a recap video or like, you know, they shoot, you know, um, you know, oh, maybe like, you know, in a couple of years, you have a couple of videographers that work for you. They pick their people who, you know, run the cameras and they do all that stuff. And then there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. But if you want to be a filmmaker, you've got to start defining a vision of like how I'm going to shoot things, how I'm going to do things. And you've got to stick to that. You've got to stick to your guns as well. You know what I mean? Like I, I had those, did that when I did that first, and I had the sense, like I did that first, that video, the 91. Mm. And I was like, nah, like it needs something at the end. Like it needs like that. It needs like a montage. It needs like something beautiful to tie it all together. And that's when I started developing this sense of my own style, like my own direction. And that's what I, I say like I'm interested in direction is the whole idea of direction is you're directing it, you're shaping it in a certain direction. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the distinguishing between videography and direction. You know what I mean? I had no clue. But yeah. <laughs> you learn something every day. Yeah. So what do you see in your future for... Um, Garden State Journal. Well, that's We're a, moving into that, like yeah. since you um, sort of explained it all. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I guess where where I'm going now with it is, yeah, as I said, like it's, I'm starting to direct now. What is my idea? What is my vision of Melbourne? Like, what? How do I see Melbourne? Um, so I'm going to do three volume. I'm going to do three volumes this year um, of the magazine. Um, but I think with that, taking the videos to a next level and taking the filmmaking to a new level is like I want to do a feature length or a longer, not a feature length, but a longer form film, but that takes all the essence of the street videos. Cause that's what I'm known for. And I think that's what appeals to people. And what appeals to me is like the characters in the heart of Melbourne. So doing a longer form piece where trying to capture the personalities of Melbourne, you know, trying to capture, capture that in a, in a, in a longer form, you know, in a film. Um, uh, and get, getting more nuanced with the videos, starting to, you know, develop a more of a sense of, um, 
yeah, what is Melbourne to me and really d- directing that. Um, and obviously like working at push pull, I do a lot. I'm learning a lot there. Like I'm doing, I'm shooting all their videos and all the content stuff there. So, um, you know, that's helping me then develop that, you know, and develop my filmmaking abilities, you know, so that I can, uh, then do take on longer form projects, uh, even maybe work with a few brands and things, you know, in in the future, in the near future, and that. So is that where you see yourself in the next sort of five years? Is to start working with more brands? Well, do, I, I, do I see the, fi- the film is the film is this year. The film yep. is, is going to be this year. So um, because there's, I'm basically at a point now where uh, there's not a lot of limitations holding me back from making the film. So I don't really want to say to myself like oh, I'll do it in two years because yep. I feel like that's going to I'm going to get there and then I won't have done it. So mm. I've kind of said to myself, like, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot, even if it doesn't release this year, I'm going to shoot the film this oh, year. Yeah. Um, uh, and whether I get it right hundred percent is not important. It's like saying I'm going to do it now, you know, and, and just sticking to it. Um, but yeah, doing the more and really defining what that is, like defining what the Garden State Journal vision of Melbourne is. Cause the more you do that, that thing, the more you, as I said, the more you direct and the more you create a sense of this is my style the more you can then work with brands, the more you can mm. then work with people because your vision becomes more clear so that brands know, oh, is this someone we want to work with? Yep. You know, I've had a few offers and like, as I've gone at the start, it was like people would reach out to me and like a few like gym influences and things and be like, oh, do you want to like work with me or do you want to do a video with me? And I knew like, oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't fit. Your thing doesn't fit my thing. Like that's where that's where those people probably need more of a videographer than they need a filmmaker or a director. And so, as I've gone, I'm, I'm defining this vision more and more, so that people know. All right, if you're a brand, you come to me. This is this is how he directs. This is how he shapes his vision of Melbourne. And so, we're going to work with him. But this is what we're we're expecting, you know. And there's there's leeway of like, oh, could you do it this? Could you change this thing or that thing? Like, yeah, hundred percent. But people know what they're getting when yeah. they're coming to me. You know what I mean? It's like you know what you're getting when you're coming to me. And I think even even push pull, like when I started working there, that they said I they were like you know, we were talking about me working there, and um, they knew straight up. I was like, oh, you know, I'm not. I'm happy to do like I'm happy to adapt and to do you know some like yeah. TikToks and to do short form videos because I know that's important to your to your business. But my main function here as a as a person in this business is going to be I'm going to direct. And I'm going to make videos of like this yep. in this style. And I'm, I basically said like, is that what you, you've got to ask yourself, is that what you want? Because that's what I'm going to bring. Mm. And they were like, yeah, hundred percent. And they knew what they were getting. They knew what they were asking for with that. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So the more I define this vision and even doing the movie, it's like people know what they're going to get. People know what, what, if you're going to work with me, this is what I'm going to bring, you know? And then, yeah, the more, and you know, it's funny. I almost think like, because oh, I do want to really talk with movies with you because, yeah. because I, I know you're, you're a big movie guy. And um, I don't know, I just think it's so funny because like a director or a filmmaker like David Lynch or um, all, like, there's a big example of like Tarantino or like Scorsese, but someone like David Lynch, you know, makes a bit more artsy movies. But yeah. um, uh, even other filmmakers, it's like these guys have made, the people have made a career off of basically just being themselves. Like they've just, they've doubled down on who they are and they've made a whole career off of that. Like Their they, style as well. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, they've got Their a style. style and then it's funny because like a Wes Anderson then gets approached by um, yeah. uh, H&M or whoever mm. he's worked with. Um, maybe Gucci, he did a few with Gucci or whatever. It's like they get approached to do projects because they have a style. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So the more you commit to a style, it's like the more I think the more successful you're going to be almost like just, and Tarantino is obviously the best example of that because his style is so diverse and so it pulls from so many aspects of yeah. popular culture. Um, but yeah, all the best filmmakers have a style. All mm. the best filmmakers have a, have a sense of who they are. Um, yeah. I'm, st- I'm developing that now. Like the long, the, the street shots, like the yeah. street shots, like when I make the movie, that stuff's going to be there. The, the street shots. Well, that's you. Yeah. That's me, exactly. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, scenes where characters are just shit talking. There'll be a little bit of that. Um, you know, all those things. But following yeah. a journey or yeah. like, because that's what people want to see is like people following a journey yeah, along. Yeah. Like, or want to have a feeling from a movie. Like, that's why I watch movies to yeah. like feel something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. you only get like when you watch films. Yeah. I want to ask, I'll, I'll do, I'll get into movies with you because I, I want to ask what your favorite movie is. My favorite. Or, uh, it's a hard question. I saw you I were know. doing that thing. You were putting all the the 
the movies. Oh yeah, all the, the movies together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You did, like, um, that post. Where's that? Is that here? No, no. <laughs> in the office. Yeah, so it's my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. she's doing all that. Yeah, it's, yeah. So um, yeah, she's and she's into all the films. So yeah, it's yeah. like pretty easy. But probably my favorite. Cause she asked me this maybe like a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, she pretty much said, "What's your favorite movie?" And I reckon, and I reckon it's um, I reckon Blow. Oh, with Johnny yeah. Depp. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I haven't seen it, but yeah, I know. It. Yeah. It's, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta get onto that. It's good. It just yeah. like makes you feel a bit. Yeah. You know? How about you? What's your favorite movie? Um, this is a massive question, actually, question. for you. <laughs> um, tricky. Uh, there's like my favorite movie. There's like the movies I grew up on, like Indiana Jones and like all that stuff, which like my my dad made me watch. Like my dad made me watch like Coen Brothers movies, like Fargo and stuff. Mm. Like that's a lot of the stuff I grew up watching. Uh, and like two hands, like an Aussie movie, all that stuff. Like my dad, my dad made me watch it when I was, I was, I was young. Like, so <laughs> I, a big influence on me. So there's like those movies that are like very special to me, like childhood yeah. movies and stuff, like especially Indiana Jones, like big influence. Um, but in terms of my favorite movie, always changes. Yeah. Right That's now. What that, that is like with me as well. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. like, yeah, it's my favorite movie, but I like watched it maybe like two months ago and I I'm really loved it. I'm glad you didn't it. say a Tarantino movie. Yeah, like, yeah. Everyone's favorite is a fucking Tarantino movie. And T- Tarantino, it's just, you know what? We shouldn't even talk about Tarantino anymore. We just accept all his movies are amazing. Yeah. They're all good. Let's not, let's not talk about them. You know there, what I mean? There's a lot of like uh, mixed reviews on his last one. And I was like, oh, I thought it was fine. I thought it was great. Story, yeah. 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 But like, it was a story about. People Nothing. go, oh, Django, Django, and uh, fucking, yeah, no, no shit. Dogs. Pulp Fiction, of course. Pulp Fiction's like one of the best movies of all time. We don't have to talk about yeah. it. We just accept that it's one of the best movies ever. Like, mm. we just, it's it. We don't have to talk about it. Let's just leave it, all right? So it doesn't even, I don't, I don't, it doesn't even clarify, I think, for top 10 lists because you're not putting, th- people yeah. say like Tarantino, it's like, I don't think you're putting a lot of thought into it. Yeah, yeah. It's like everyone knows those movies. They're all, they're very respected. All right, sorry, the question. <laughs> <laughs> the question was my favorite. Um, so aside from all those ones, which are obviously amazing and like hugely influential, like the Tarantinos, the, obviously, um, even like Scorsese movies, putting them aside, um, the movie that stuck with me the most that I've watched the last few years is um, the guy uh, Sergio Leone who made uh, who made uh, made the the Dollars trilogy with Clint Eastwood, like very well known for like Good, the Bad, the Ugly, oh, yeah. Fistful of Dollars, and like all the West spaghetti westerns. Um, but he made a film was the last film he made in his life, I think, called. Uh, Once Upon a Time in America. I don't know. Have you heard of that? No. And, with, and and De Niro, De Niro is like the main character. It's like, it's kind of actually very much in the spirit of like the Irishman. Yeah. But it was like, you know, where Great it follows, well. follows a character, <laughs> follows a character like over their lifetime, uh, like a, like a gangster over their lifetime. Um, and De Niro is fucking amazing. Yeah, but not, not very well known because when it released, the studios basically chopped it up and ruined it and like made it into like an hour and a half movie or a two hour movie. But then later on got re-released in its full form, which was uh, in its like, it's about four hours long. So yeah. It's a long movie, but it's, it's amazing. It's like, it's just following this gangster in, you know, De Niro plays this like Jew- Jewish gangster from in New York in, from like the thirties and like the twenties all the way up until the sixties. So you follow his life and his journey. Oh man, I love As, and like you would that. love that. Cause it's yeah. just, it's just epic. It's really, the scale of it is, is beautifully epic, mm. but it's also, um, I don't know, it, it just, the reason that clicked with me was because that was like, to me, I was like, that's, it was a love letter to America and to New York, but it was made mm. by an Italian filmmaker who didn't live in New York, or didn't grow up in New York. Was He was like known for these spaghetti westerns and shot even parts of Once Upon a Time in America. He shot it in uh, in Italy. And it's just so interesting to me because I'm like, it was, a, it was a movie which captured what New York and what America was so perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it was such a vibe. perfectly American uh, film, yet was made by someone who I think barely even spoke a lot of English. Mm. So he's making this film which capsulates what America is so perfectly, and yet, and I, probably the best film about America I've ever seen, like about the country and about you know the, the American dream, and about like the trend and about how America changed over time. So perfectly articulated, yet made by an, an be- a, a cunt who could fucking barely speak English. Mm. And I don't know, and that just really clicked with me because it was like, um, it was like to me, my, yeah, my dream, my, per- my magnum opus, like my final thing is like, if I could just make a movie that just encapsulated like what Australia is to me or what Melbourne is to me over time, like the past, and, and how I feel like, you know, you're watching America, like you're watching New York change from like the 30s to the 60s. It's like, I feel like Melbourne and Australia has changed even just, I'm fucking 20 years old, but I feel like 
it's changed so much like from when I was a kid yeah. like like going to the milk bar yeah. and like and fucking you know just like you know not having phones and like and just being like you know playing in the street and stuff with your mates playing and like, cricket or like yeah it's changed so much in my lifetime yeah. let alone like what it will go in our, in our lifetimes and like I don't know to make a film which encapsulates like the passage of time so perfectly is such a beautiful idea to me like I'd love to make a movie which starts in Melbourne in like you know the night 80s or 90s like like following like you know start like with my dad or with my parents and then like you know carry on story to like yeah. to me you know because that that would be i don't know that's just such a beautiful idea of like oh that movie like made me brought me to fucking tears because like, yeah. just like the passage of time and 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 you know it's a few when the, when like and, the time jumps happen and like with those ones it makes you feel like you do get old and you're it's like yeah. you need to like live life now yeah it's like, it is it adds, it, that, it's, that's that's why i love watching those types of films is because it's like oh you're not here forever and it's just like yeah things grow and everything grows Dude, i love i think everyone loves those movies that are like bittersweet that are yeah. like like even just things like uh what's a great example like like something like 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 the like what's it called the boy in striped pajamas or whatever mm, yeah. like, like those fucking dark movies um or like love, or like all ro- romantic movie, like romantic comedy, or something like even like La La Land. I don't yeah. know, sort of like, but just those beautiful movies, like those bittersweet movies. Like I think that's that more than when we watch something like that, it touches on something more than like a Marvel movie could. Yeah, like, where, I it's love Marvel hap- movie. where it's like not even a happy ending, and it's just like yeah. it's actually real life, and you're like, oh, yeah, because yeah. it, it touches on something closer to just so yeah. close to real life. You know what I mean? Like, um, like whereas they make films now, and it's just like, oh, let's see. Have a happy, happy ending so everyone's happy at the end of it because it makes you feel happy. You yeah, I, I still think there's a lot of merit. I think there's a lot to take from Marvel. Yeah. And I, I love, I actually love what kind of watch the new Marvel, like all the new Marvel movies that come out. I'm, I'm so excited about all that shit. Um, but yeah, there's something, there is something a little bit missing, I think, in, in film. But um, and yeah, in capturing like, yeah, just like, I don't know. There's, there's, you just get so much. Like I was watching like Indiana Jones the other day. I was rewatching him. Like fuck, the filmmaking is so good. Yeah, you don't. It realize. feels so real. Mm. You feel so like grounded in the, in the um, like all of the, the practical effects and the like. You know when he's like on that bit when he's like on doing like the car. The when he's like going after the the arc and he's like he jumps on the car and like you can yeah. tell they were actually like doing all this stuff in real life and it's like proper stunt. Oh, it's 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 crazy and like. I think I think we'll come back to that. I think filmmaking yeah. will come back to that. Like all the filmmakers now. That first of all, all the filmmakers suck because all the young filmmakers suck because they're not doing anything and they're not fucking put, doing any work. Mm. So they suck. They're like, oh, there's no fucking film industry and no one's gonna help me and no one's gonna like make give me money to make a movie. It's like, yeah, get well, out there, yeah. get out there and start <laughs> doing something. You know, and then you'll get noticed, and, and then, then you'll get noticed, and then you might have a chance. And people, are, oh, I might give this bloke. This amount of money, yeah, to exactly, and and there's still movies being made. The yeah. fucking like A twenty four pump out like mm. crazy amounts of like brilliantly made, high quality artistic vision fucking movies every year. Um, even big studio, like you know, there's still big movies getting made that are like really about you know like um, serious subjects and that have like very intense ide- like ideas and and stuff like that, but. Um, and even the Marvel movies, I think the Marvel movies are leaning a bit more in like an artistic direction mm. even where, you know, like, I don't know, did you see like, the, the, I think like, yeah, I think they are leaning, like even the fucking, the new Doctor Strange movie. Like, yeah, it was crazy. Giving Sam yeah. Raimi, who did the old Spider-Man yeah. movies, letting him like basically do whatever he wants. Like, mm. like it was very in a Sam Raimi movie. Yeah, you know? that's what I'm liking at the moment. They're letting the directors and stuff do whatever they want. Do like, what they want. Yeah. yeah, in the way, and that comes back to really where it started with mm. like John Favreau doing the original Iron Man where it was very, um, very, had a very distinct vision. Yeah. Like, you know, you could tell it had John Farrow's personality in it. And um, yeah, I don't know what the question was. But <laughs> <laughs> that was a good yeah, one. We yeah, probably should yeah. wrap it up. But yeah. man, like you've definitely, this whole conversation just opened my eyes to filmmaking and yeah, yeah. like the way you sort of see films and the way you, um, the things that you're going to be doing in the future, man. I'm super excited to see what you're going to be getting up to in the yeah. next few years, man. Yeah. Like, I'm going to get you on next year. 100%. I'm going to keep Canada. you accountable yeah, for all yeah, that, that stuff. But and yeah, again, I want to say, like, I think it's important to say, like, yeah, how much of it, like, almost thank you in a sense because of how much influence that, as I said, you, you and Ash, growing up around around you guys, just being that little bit younger, where we mm. were, where we were very, me and Simon were very, you know, malleable, and we could, and that influence like meant a lot yeah. like that actually is really i think informed who we are like i don't think 
you know, first of all, like me and Simon, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing if you guys weren't running those markets. Mm. Cause that's how we started talking was like, we, we were mates. And then I said, Oh, you want to come to these markets? My cousin, my cousin's doing it. He's like, you were there. And like, that was like the starting point, like for, for a lot of what we're doing. So, you know, in, you know, thank you in a way. And like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm just excited for where Melbourne and like what you're yeah. going to be doing and like coming in Melbourne culture as well. Where it's yeah. going to be like, Oh, f- dude, I gotta like, I don't, people have, don't know. Like when you, I fucking first came to your your shop. How crazy it was! Like how almost empty it was. Not mm. empty, but not as much. Not like, stock. And I was fucking blown away when I came in there today, and it was like crazy. <laughs> it was fucking yeah. mental. I was like, yeah, it's just like yeah. We're all growing, man. Yeah, Everyone we are. Hundred percent. We are. We are all growing, and it's yeah. it's fine. So Instagram, TikTok. Oh, my, my Instagram. Oh yeah, mine. Uh, well, my my it's GS McGarn State Journal, mm. uh, and then my personal is non Lord Joe Pesci. I appreciate it, man. But yeah. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for your time, man. Appreciate it.